Hello lovelies. So today I thought we'd have a little look at a river study and it is of course um, the River Tees. I don't know how you want to remember it but I guess I kind of think about a cup of tea a little bit. It's not a local river to us, um, in fact nowhere near. It's in the northeast of England so nice for all the students up there uh, who are studying AQA geography, uh, but not so good for us. So we've got to work a little bit harder to try and figure this one out. Just drop a little um, compass into your work as well, because it's useful. We're going to try and kind of draw the river uh, as it moves east to the North Sea. Or at least that's my aim. Um, it's a tough one otherwise. I mean, it's not a local river. You've never been there or are very unlikely that uh, any of you have been there. So I guess it's it's kind of important that we try and we try and make sense of it. And I think an infographic for this is actually really useful. Um, so it starts up, as all rivers do, the source starts up in the, in the highlands. Uh, this is actually in the Pennine Hills. Okay, quite a high um, peak actually of 890 three meters above sea level. Yeah, it's um, really very high. Uh, so the source is up there. Now this is an area that's that's very high up but then it, it is also used, it's used by humans for things like um, sheep farming. Probably thought I was drawing a cloud there didn't you? So that is my small sheep. <laughs> uh, let's just draw a couple more with their funny little faces. There we go. So kind of sheep farming, um, those kinds of activities to uh, earn some money. So the start of a river is known as the source. I think bottle of ketchup. Um, and that is the source of the River Tees. And what it does is it makes its way to the North Sea. So I just put North Sea over here. Now this distance is something like 130 kilometers, but we're obviously going to try and squeeze it onto a page. Um, so we're going to try and kind of draw what it does in the middle section. It gets a bit wiggly and then it flattens out and then it will just join into the sea. And it has a nice big wide sort of estuary. Um, which is what we call this sort of intertidal zone where the sea comes in uh, and floods the estuary and then it sort of goes back out. So it's tidal, okay? And in between there, what we have is the middle course, the upper course, the middle course, and the lower course. Uh, and the middle course is one where we find um, those meanders. And the river starts off very thin, so it's just really a trickle, a stream really not very thick at all here and then it it gets wider as we go along this isn't an accurate representation i can promise you but um it just gives you a rough picture of what's going on um, and if it helps you you know to just jot down sort of upper pop it in a circle uh, middle do the same and then lower. Okay, so you've got the, the river profile as we move down, or rather from west to east, not, not necessarily down. Okay, so now we're going to start trying to kind of add in a few things. First off, though, just to kind of give it a little bit of perspective, I'm just going to shade. And you know, you can do the same if you've got a blue highlighter, perhaps you've got a felt tip or pencil just shade in it doesn't have to be perfect but just shade in our river I can promise you the North Sea and the River Tees is not this lovely shade of turquoise <laughs> it's quite different would be um, a much more uh, well browner blue that's for sure but anyway 
There we go. So we've got our river, we've got it coloured. Right, what comes next? Landforms. So starting with the upper course and thinking about the kind of landforms we see here, you can see this hill and that hill. Um, and I, can, I can add some more in, but essentially what we're looking at here is the V-shaped valleys. So if we just write that down. That's where two hills kind of interlock and the shape that you get is that V shape. And they're called sort of interlocking spurs as each sort of piece of land juts out in front of the other. So we'll put V shaped valleys and pop in brackets interlocking spurs. Now this infographic is not going to go into depth on all of them, so just, you know, if, if, that, if that is sort of sounding new to you or if you'd forgotten about it, then can you please do look that up, because there is a whole section on that in the revision guide. Um, but these kind of landforms are all formed through erosion, and the type of erosion at, at this place in the upper course is, and I'm going to draw a big arrow going down, is vertical erosion. Okay, often mostly hydraulic action. Now, hydraulic action is the force of water. Okay, so it's the it's literally the weight and the pressure of the water wearing things away. Now, somewhere in the upper section is a very special feature that's not a V-shaped valley. It's not an interlocking spur. Interlocking spur. Sorry, it's a waterfall. So I'm just going to imagine it's here, really. Um, draw a little arrow, and we'll, it's actually got a name. It's called High Force Waterfall. There we go. Um, it's 21 meters high. It's not small. It's the largest waterfall in the UK. If it, if it was here, we would just be able to show it. Have this bustling water. It is really powerful, really loud, lots going on, um, and actually quite a big tourist attraction. Lots of people go to visit it, particularly after it's been raining a lot, and they want to go and sort of see the flooding and you know how how um, fast the water is. Now I'm going to draw for you. Um, where should I put it? I might put it over here. Oh, I'm not sure how to put it. How, in fact, I tell you what, I don't need to. I was going to draw how a waterfall is formed, but I've got a whole infographic on that, which you can have a look at. But essentially, the hard rock um, falls into the plunge pool, um, which has been carved away because it's less hard, softer rock. Um, and it, it, the waterfall is actually retreating, so it's actually moving backwards. And when it does, it leaves a gorge behind, which is tall, um, rocky structure with tall, steep sides either side, and the waterfall's moving backwards. So it's quite, it's quite something to behold if you get the chance to visit. Anyway, moving on, we'll go to our middle course. And what the middle course is famous for is, of course, meanders. Now, meanders... Um, well, we're not just going to look at meanders, but we are going to look at meanders, but we're also going to look at how they form something called an oxbow lake. And to do that, I'm going to sort of uh, draw another bigger meander, if you like, here. So if you just copy mine, so we start with a normal kind of meander, and then we'll have one that gets really close, and then it sort of moves on like this. Obviously, it doesn't have a, an arrow like that. But yeah, so just draw, there we go, we've got a meander, and then we've got a really kind of tight meander that's almost touching. There we go. And then over here, our classic kind of oxbow lake. So this is this diagram is to show, sort of show you how in time, I guess I should show you that, shouldn't I? Over time, lots of time, um, a straight river, um, which is, yeah, fairly straight, um, will start to curve. And the reason that it curves, the whole reason that it curves, is something called lateral erosion. So that is side-to-side -side erosion rather than um, vertical erosion. 
And what happens, if I just take a different pen, is the channel, so the water's moving this way around the meander. Water is essentially quite lazy. It will take the easiest route. Okay, it's not fast. And in a time of flood, it will absolutely uh, cut corners. So over time, as it gets closer and closer, the river says, well, why, why am I going around this corner? Instead, actually, thank you very much, I'm just gonna carry straight on. And then this corner gets left as a lake. It's known as an oxbow lake. The water isn't moving in this one at all. It's, it's just stagnant. And actually, they tend to dry up um, after time um, and become a bit boggy. Now, what we need to do is label it. So if you just write meander on those. Okay, and this section here, just where I'm putting the star, um, that's called the neck. It's the neck of the meander. And this here is the new channel. Okay, the new channel, ignoring the old corner. And just so that I could quickly mention this, the reason they grow like this and they keep expanding is because most of the erosion is on this outside edge, this edge here. So that's the one that's really being pushed out and pushed out. You know, the max erosion is on the corners, on the outside of the bend. The inside of the bend is where we tend to see things like river beaches, you know, where there's deposition actually because the water's moving so slowly. Okay, so that, oh, we just need to label that last one, ox, bow, lake. Okay, so remember in the middle course of the river, we don't have vertical erosion, we have side to side erosion known as lateral erosion. Still hydraulic action, it's still the force of the water, but it's sideways. Okay. And then as we go further and deeper and, and to, further towards the sea, the channel widens and it also deepens. Um, and we often start to see larger boats, larger container ships, things like that, using the end, um, the lower course of the river, um, transporting cargo and things like that. Now, when the river gets to the sea, I've not drawn it brilliantly here, um, there is a bit of mixing going on between the river water and sea. And very often, on the edges and things, you get, um, this is supposed to be grass, by the way, but a kind of, a bit of a salt marsh forming. Just draw a salt marsh. I like to show that with um, one of my really badly drawn seabirds, actually. There we go. Little eye, couple of legs. Um, let's have another one over here. It's sort of supposed to be like a seagull. But there we go. Um, but yeah, a bit of a salt marsh forming. So plants, animals, a bit of a wildlife haven, actually. And it's the same at the River Tees. You know, there's this area. It's protected, actually. I should put that. Yeah, um, it's a protected area. And one of the things that it has, which we have, in Chichester Harbour um, are seals. Now I can't draw birds and I really can't draw seals but let's try. Got kind of fat bodies haven't they with little flippy flappy fin there. Anyway yeah really bad I said I couldn't draw seals but there we go. Um, but yeah so here we are we've got our estuary, our salt marsh, our seals, our wildlife um, all that's left to do is just to jot down that it flows west to east for 128 kilometres to the sea. And it's our best river example because it contains all of our wonderful landforms that we want to see as we go down the river, uh, all in one river. We don't have to go hunting for them. So there you go, the River Tees. Thank <laughs> you.